Um, after that, the conversation moved on, and we got to these fun subjects. Mm. Mm, it, it's hard. You know, it's it's intense mm. when you have a different mental health condition. Yeah. And then when I say mental health condition, I don't mean autism because obviously that is its whole own thing. Yeah. We both have several severe mental health conditions. Pick your diagnosis. <laughs> like, for instance, I suffer from uh, BPD, amongst other things, and that has a whole list of... That's basically an umbrella term for everything that I go through and also you because that's partly what you're diagnosed with. You were saying about, um, so you, you have to, there's pressure to have fun. You have to have fun because, you know, you, you don't want to be the person that stands out and... It, or it, bums people out. Or bums people out, that's, yeah. And it's hard in our family because, or our families, because I and you in both sides of the family are seen as the weirdos and not in a horrible way but our opinions and outlooks on life are very different to mainly our families around us because it, it's hard to phrase like you uh, so there's pressure to have fun which is just an alien feeling definitely to me and i'm pretty sure to you um it involves being happy or faking being happy and being happy is not something I can personally remember um, or figure out how to fake which is why I, I um, don't include myself in a lot of things social situations around me you know that, that my friends are doing or family are doing because you don't want to bring other people down you and you don't want to offload all your all your crap onto them and always be the down person you you know you want to see other people thrive and you you want to be included and things and it makes the situation very uncomfortable for us personally and i think that's one of the reasons our families think we're a bit weird is because mm. we having depression long term definitely makes you have this extra view on life and it's not to say that other people are shallow and don't look into things deeply because of course they do you know but for some reason it's like having depression shuts one door and opens another in the way of thinking and once you've had it, you you can't change that. It, which is just really, really uncomfortable. And yeah, yeah. It's from your point of view, you've been depressed and miserable so long you can't remember the last time you were happy. No. So you can't fake it, but also you get more depressed seeing other people being happy. And going I, I and go. Oh, I used to feel like that. I I personally don't get depressed seeing other people happy. No, but I, I've noticed you get miserable because you remember what it used to be to be happy, and you're like fuck, I haven't felt like that for ages. No, oh. I don't. I don't remember. I remember it was a thing, mm. but I don't remember what it was like. Yeah, yeah. So you have the sadness that you don't. You oh, can't. Yeah. Whereas from my point of view, it's, it's almost slightly easier because I've never actually. You're used to masking. I, I'm like, used... You're good at masking. Yeah, but not only that, I don't have a reference point for happy because no. I've always felt either dead or miserable. Which is super alien so I... for people because it's they ad... don't yeah. understand that opinion. Yeah, uh, and, that, and that's the annoying thing. Like, If I say, look at the camera now, and I say, well, no, I've never felt happy. That's not a statement or a thing to no. think. I just never have. I've never experienced it. Therefore, I'm not missing out... I simply don't know no, what it is. I, I know I have been happy. Yeah, which makes you feel. But sad. I def no, it's it's just gone. I like, yeah. I've no idea. So to act around family and friends is just so hard. Hmm. And you do you don't want to act. You don't want to, you know. I mean, God, if if my 
family ever knew how deep things were, they would hate to think that I was uncomfortable around them. That's the last thing they would want. That's the last thing I want. But it's just a thing. And you want to be able to feel happy around your family. You, you want to go and visit your family and enjoy seeing them and have a nice time. Not be going, I really want to partake in this, but when am I going home? Yeah, that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when can I go yeah. home? When's the time limit? <laughs> yeah, so, so you just feel more and more like the outsider and get more and more lonely and that's why it fucking hurts. Which is probably why suicide is... One of the reasons why suicide is, is worse at Christmas because... Absolutely. There's so much pressure or, or you don't have people and you do remember those feelings and... Yeah. You know, what, what am I doing with my life? Yeah, so, so, so you see people who are being more successful and it worries you that you're doing bugger all with your life. Or you've got the material pressures that you can't afford X, Y, and Z, or you don't have X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Or you have the, oh crap, I remember that Uncle Steve was, was with us last year and so many people have died. Or, if you are mentally different to other people, then you have the, oh, look at all the humans being human. That must be nice. Yeah. So you just feel more isolated. And the more people, and I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, and I don't know how to... I don't have a solution to it. If I had a solution to it, there would be so many more people getting on better. But the more they try and bring you in and include you, the more isolated you feel. Mm. So actually, the, the, be the best... All right. If I had one piece of advice I could give about how to... I don't want to say cope with. In my opinion... In my non-medical opinion, as someone who's lived through this only just, if you could do one thing for the person who was mentally different in your life at Christmas, it would be to ask them what they would want to do and accommodate them. With reach, no pressures. Yeah, with no pressure. Reach a gentle compromise mm. of, okay... It would be lovely if you would join us for Christmas because we would like you to be there. Mm. But if you can only do two hours, do two hours. What are your dietary requirements? Not because you're being awkward. If you want to bring your own drink, feel free. We won't judge you. Just turn up with it quietly. How can we help you feel comfortable is what it comes down to. Mm. And if it's... Yeah, I may cancel at the last minute. That's fine. Yeah, I may only pop yeah. in for a drink, or yeah. I I might come round when everyone else has left just just to say hi and yeah. you know have a Christmas drink with you. Yeah, because I can't deal with the amount of people. Yeah, or, or literally, you know, if I turn up at eleven in the morning when we all go to the pub for a pre-lunch drink and then I slope away quietly. I enjoyed myself seeing you. It was lovely to see you. I've just gone home into my comfort zone. And bear in mind that when I slope away early, I will be feeling shit that I've sloped away early. Oh, God, yeah. I will oh, be God, feeling... Yeah. I will be having massive I've missed out. No, I'm always the last to stay. Yeah. In family ones, not so much friend ones. Um, situations. Because I clear up. I'm mm. always the clearer upper and I partly do that because I can slip away into mm. the kitchen while everyone else is having fun. You clearing up is the same as me wanting to go to a gig if I'm playing because I can busy myself with my drums and organise the event. Myself. I can still be involved. Yeah. I can busy myself. Yeah. I am being useful and I am away from the people. Yes. And it's not that the people are bad. It's that I feel so awkward yes. that I, I I need a minute, I need to escape, but I want to be helpful, so that's that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I think um, we were also going to talk about the funny way in which we met. <laughs>